Hi, this is Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to video two of the tutorial for the LSP Floral Texture Overlays. This video tutorial is for Creative Cloud if you're using Adobe CC. Um, that is the subscription based Adobe when you get the updates regularly. If you're using an old version of Photoshop, um, a purchase version where you cannot update such as CS4, CS5, CS6, um, and if you're using Photoshop Elements, please do um, exit this video and watch the correct tutorial because this one is using some advanced methods using Creative Cloud in the actions that just are not available on the older versions. So if you're using an older version um, or a limited version such as Photoshop Elements, please do watch um, the video tutorial, the correct video tutorial for that. Still here? Great, you've got CC. Okay, so if you are unsure um, of how to get the actions loaded and the textures um, unzipped, please do watch video tutorial one, which is the setup guide. It shows how to get the actions in looking like this and to make sure your Photoshop files are unzipped. If your um, download is still zipped, Photoshop's just not gonna be able to use those files. Um, the Photoshop cannot use compressed files, so you need to unzip. Um, that's really very important. And if you've done that, great, let's get started. Okay, so you will notice in the floral texture applicator actions, you have actions for CC. The mid to dark background CC, you also have CS and PSE. This is for the older versions of Photoshop. You do not use, need to use these ones. In the light and pale background, you have the same CC and CS. You can use all the bonus extras exactly the same. So whether you're used to using actions or you're new, don't worry, I'm gonna take you through step by step exactly how to do this. So hopefully your screen looks a little bit similar to mine. You have your actions up, you have your layers panel, you have your image loaded. This beautiful shot is by Anna Brandt. And as you can see, this is a mid to slightly dark tone background. So we're going to be using the CC mid dark background applicator. Click on this once, or if you're on, um, if you're not on button mode, you need to click on the action and hit play. And what will happen is it's going to open up your folders so you can locate the textures. If it doesn't come up with the textures, just locate them, make sure it's the unzipped version. So how about for this one, I use the vintage textures. Let's just view these large. And I'm going to use, um, let's use Victoria for this one in the vintage collection. The tutorial works exactly the same, whichever floral textures you own from LSP. So you can double click or hit place and you will notice this appears over your image. So you need to stretch this, make sure it fills out the whole image. If your image is landscape, you can rotate to match. You can just resize this until you're happy. And when you're happy, you can hit the little tick and the actions will play out. If for some reason your CC does not allow the actions to play out, just simply hit the action again and it will carry on playing. And now you can see the texture has been added beautifully. Um, the actions make use of CC subject selection. It doesn't always work so well. You can see here it um, has actually painted over the wings a little bit because these Photoshop did not see the wings as subject. So I'm going to show you how you can get a much more accurate selection. But you can see here the texture is added. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful with this image. Let's just turn this on and off. You can see in your layers panel, you have a group. You have the texture here. Above this, you have fader paint, where you can use this to um, fade out the texture. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then you have some layers here that you can turn on or off. You have saturation down, or you can open this one and actually change the hue and saturation. You have intensify, which you can turn on or off, does what it says on the tin. You have lift the details, which will lift and lighten and bring those details out. And then you have lift and brighten, which if you want to just brighten it up a little bit, use that one. And you have dark and deep, which will darken the action down a little bit. You also have some paints here. So the paints are the black layer masks. The ones with white layer masks affect your whole image, unless you'd like to paint away with a black brush. If you're not sure what layer masks do, they're basically like a Lotto scratch card. Black means hide, white means show, and you can decide what shows on your image. So back down here to the floral texture. I can see it hasn't quite made the most perfect subject selection. I've deliberately used a little bit of a tricky image so I can show you how to do this. If it was just the subject, it would have made a perfect selection. So come up here um, and on your magic wand tool, quick selection. Click on your subject layer and just run this round anywhere that you wish to select and you can hold down Alt to deselect. So I'm just selecting the rest of these wings here. And if you want, you can refine the selection a little bit more by coming up here to select a mask. Again, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, um, this will not work. 
so please do watch the tutorial for the old versions of Photoshop. So you can see I've just selected that in a little bit, just refine the edge and hit OK. And now I can come up here, click on the mask, the white box with the black subject line, click on this, select a brush, on black, 100% opacity, 25% flow. And I'm just going to use this to rub over um, these extra areas I've selected. And that removes the texture because I've painted black. You can see here on the layer mask, black means hide. If the layer mask was not there, the whole image would have texture over it and you would manually need to paint it away. Next up on the fader paint, select a white brush because it's a black layer mask. And I'm just going to use this to just dab around and fade any areas along the bottom. You can use fader paint anywhere. If you want to fade the whole texture down like this, you can do so. You'll notice underneath you have a smart filter Gaussian blur. You can use a white brush to blur the background if you wanted to, if you wanted to get that depth of field. Everything here is completely adaptable, so you can just tweak and play, and you will find, depending on your images, there's a different kind of recipe for each one. You can change the saturation, just double click on this little box and you can take the saturation down, you can bring it up, you can change the hue, the saturation here, and that's a really powerful little slider that you can use um, if you wanted to do that. Intensify. If it's too intense, you can bring the opacity up or down, you can paint away from anywhere, entirely up to you. Just have a little play with these and you'll really get used to using them. You have skin adapt so for example if you you've put a very warm texture on and your image is quite cool you can use this to paint over the skin if you wanted to anywhere on your image and it will adapt that but for this image it actually has worked really well the white balance is beautiful it works fine you can also use color match so for example i'm using that a little bit and play with the opacity entirely up to you these are all just extra options you don't have to use them all entirely whatever you would like to do once you are happy with your texture being added, there are some more things you can do if you want to. For example, adding perspective to the background. So rather than the texture being, um, you know, kind of flat over the top, you can add some perspective in, which makes it look much more believable. So on the bonus extras, it says here, very importantly, make sure the texture is selected. So click on the texture and you can decide. You've got add floor to beanbag fabric, and that's for newborn photographers. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that separately, so don't worry about that for now. You can watch the separate video on this one. Add floor perspective. This is a guided action. So I'm going to click on it. Step one, click the main texture layer in your layers panel. Well, I've already done that. That's fine. But if not, go ahead and click that now. Now is the time. And you'll see it's gone bright red. So click again. Use the marquee tool. That is the rectangle selection um, tool. So I'm going to hit stop, grab the rectangular selection, and I'm just going to draw this up until the area where the background kind of hits the floor and hit play again. Now it's going to use a perspective um, transform. So hit continue and you can just drag the bottom out and you will see now it's changing the perspective of your texture. So mess around with that until you're happy and hit enter and the action has finished. So now you can see the floor comes down and it actually sweeps out like it should so it looks really very very believable. So let's just show you a before and after. Beautiful. And you also have, have um, some other options, grain texture, a cool toning. You can add this to the texture, which adds this beautiful kind of cool tone to it. You can see there, turning that on or off, that can work beautifully for some images. You have a vintage tone. Again, if you want that more vintage look, you can turn that one on or off. And you have a dusty vignette. So you can hit play on this one and it has this beautiful dusty vignette around the outside again. You can turn it on or off. You can paint some of these areas away like this. Entirely up to you. So that's how to apply the textures to a mid to dark tone backdrop. Next up, I'm going to show you how to do it on a light background. And you can find this video up next in the video tutorial library. I'm Lauren. Thanks for watching.